Today we're doing a brief overview of the Double Special Heroes banner for August 2024 in Fire Emblem Heroes. This is your chance to get some seasonal units from the past year before their actual reruns. We have two returning 4-star focus units and both are red. New Year's Melkana and Nabata Tormon will share that increased rate. The blue group has Valentine's Ephraim and Dual Young, Female Robin and Krom. Green has New Year's Quasir and Nabata Altina. Colorless has Young Amarin and Bridal Embla. Starting with New Year's male Kana, he's an infantry dragon who's basically a red counterpart to his blue female heroic rail version. Speedy dragon with decent res, but is sacrificing HP and defense. Kana's inheritable dragon stone plus dragon stone is quite decent. It gives flat DR equal to 20% speed, and if you outspeed, you get Fauna follow. It's an interesting option for Lagoo's friends since you stack flat DR, and its lack of slaying lets you run the dragon's or special. If you want some other Dragon Fodder, Kana has Attack and Res Scout 3 and Dragon Wall 3. We now have that high Dragon Wall tier 4 upgrade if you want. For a 4 star focus, this Kana has some nice fodder if you have dragons you want to upgrade. Joining Kana is Nabata Tormob. He's a red infantry mage with solid attack and speed stats. His inheritable Nabata Beacon Tome can grant the status to ignore difficult terrain, movement penalty, and desperation. It also has plus 4 stats and 10% attack as true damage. For other skills, Tormod has Spinner's Gap, which is also found on Miranda. Spinner's Tempo 3 is only otherwise found on Monica, so it's actually quite rare, surprisingly. There also isn't a tier 4 yet, but I assume that will come eventually. For the blue group, we have Valentine's Ephraim. He's a slow lance armor with very high attack and defense. This Ephraim provides plus 4 attack and defense and 7 HP sustain after combat support to allies within 3 spaces. His lance has slaying, lots of attack and defense debuffs, 30% DR and DR piercing specials. His B skill lets the enemy go first when initiating, but grants brave attacks and no guard. This Ephraim then heals 7 HP on hit and 7 HP after combat. For fodder, very solid armor selection with armored blades and attack and defense near save. This Ephraim is the only unit with Earthfire Boost 3, which is the tier 4 attack and defense boost option. It's a pretty good skill for a variety of defensive builds. Next up is Dual Young, Female Robin, and Krom. The new Brave Alt pulls some perks from this Robin. She's a blue infantry mage with high offensive stats, and if involved in a rally or movement assist, Robin inflicts Hush Spectrum in a wide area. Brave Robin inflicts Hush Spectrum at start of turn, but that can be blocked by something like Freyr. Dual Robin's application is not, and thanks to Krom, she gets an extra action. She also gets the extra action if she already moved, if an ally will assist her afterwards. Now this Robin has the only Link 4 B skill which adds Kanto 1 to the mix of buffs. The attack and speed buff and Kanto part is actually built into the Brave Robin's B skill. Now for combat, Robin has Slang, no guard, and deer piercing specials. She gets a lot of bonus stats, 30% DR and after combat healing. Dual Robin neutralizes enemy field buffs while Brave Robin neutralizes debuffs on herself. For fodder, this Robin also has Flare and the pretty good infantry no follow 4. It's a pretty nice blue group with some neat skills. The green group starts with Nerea's Quasir. She's a green infantry mage with very high attack and speed. She has Sling, 50% DR piercing, and no guard. Her latest time special is on 5 cooldown, but if it triggers, Quasir refreshes a nearby ally, or she becomes a warp beacon for anyone within 4 spaces. She must survive combat, so she has 70% DR for 1 hit. Along with calling in allies, after fighting, she inflicts a flash status to be more annoying. For fodder, this Quasir has some great skills with Flash Sparrow, Low Speed and Res 4, and Infantry No Fall of 4 again. Can't go wrong with any of these for offensive builds. Joining Quasir is Nabata Altina. She's an Axe Infantry this time. Altina is the most min maxed Axe Infantry and has the highest res for an Axe unit by a fair bit. Like previous ults, she has dual phase brave attacks with distant counter, but with slaying this time. We used to joke that Altina would get double sling since she dual wields Ragno and Alondite, but now we actually have a unit with double slaying, so, hmm. Now, this Altina will actually have a scout effect built in, which is interesting. Her unique DR piercing special got upgraded to also have unpierceable percent DR. This value works like Dragon Wall, so you need 10 plus res for 30% damage reduction. As an extra condition, arms of the three must be pre-charged coming into battle. This is why Altina has times pulse 4 to cycle it. Her other father's skills are Attack and Finish 4 and Attack and Demon's Bulwark 4. This Bulwark variant is also on Hatred. Last up for Cutlass, Young Emeryn is an imagery healer. She has very high attack and res. Emeryn has a slaying staff with built in dazzling staff. She has poetic justice for the Wrathful plus dazzling combo. She also has a free follow up attack and 20% res is true damage for a decent damage roll. 
However, her main gimmick is turning into a warp beacon for anyone on the team after she fights or uses an assist skill. This also is a two-space warping effect, and it procs if Amarin is under 60% HP as well. To synergize, she has Magic Shield Plus, which grants an extra action if used after turn 2. It does self-inflict gravity. Still, this means Amarin can heal, then move, then trigger her team-wide warp. Imagine this with M. Silica's ring. Besides the extra action, Magic Shield Heals grants plus 6 attack on his field boss and the status to neutralize stat penalties. That's quite valuable, and Magic Shield is still one of a kind skill. We've only gotten one other healer release since Amarin, but maybe we'll see more variants soon. Now for other healer skills, you can also grab Light's Restraint, which is the Pulse Smoke type special. This poetic justice for Wrathful Staff, and to give Amarin more movement, she has attack on his Oath 4 for the warping. She may not be as deadly as other healers, but young Emrin can certainly open up some interesting playmaking maneuvers. Last up for today is Bridal Emla. She's a Kalis Flying Beast with great offensive stats and some defense. Her unique C skill still inflicts Undefended to counter Savior and Feud to counter support skills. It also gives Dodge and Cleanses penalties, which is great on Emla herself. In addition, if Emla is transformed, she gets plus 4 stats and no follow up. From her weapon, Emla gets minus 2 cooldown if her special is at max cooldown, or if it's 1 under max, then she gets minus 1 cooldown. This applies to Emla's support partner, or if no support's on the field, then the fastest ally. To take advantage, Emla has Sling, so she can pre-charge any 3 cooldown specials. She has near trace Kanto, plus gets true damage and flat DR equal to 20% speed. To be always transformed, Emla has Beast Assault 4, which guarantees Beast Transformation. It also is the Beast 50% DR piercing option. Aethanir has brought Fierce Beast, which is a full DR piercing special, but that is susceptible to scale. Beast Assault is always active. Funnily, since Embla precharges specials, she could potentially get double Fierce Beast procs. Now, continuing, Attack and Speed Wild is a beast only A skill that offers Breath type cooldown and after combat healing. It always works if you're transformed, and it only otherwise is found on Nerys Nerthus. That'll be it for this month's Double Special Heroes banner. Personally, I've thrown every orb I can get at Treasure Legends, so I won't be summoning here. If you like female Robin, you can double up on another alt if you missed out earlier this year. Coming up this month, we have a legendary hero at the end of the month. We're starting to wind down on book 8, so expect the remaining healing hands to be releasing at some point. We also have a new Tempest Trials character probably coming on a new banner as well. Before that, September's seasonal banner has been an ever shifting one. Last year was Wind Tribe themed, before that it was Flame Tribe. Will we get a third elemental theme? That's all I got for this video though. Thank you for watching, good luck on your summons, and I will see you in the next video.